Welcome, time for some art fun. If your sketchbook has been just sitting there, then stick around because today we're going to talk about how to fill it. If you've been hanging around my channel and being one of my little cuties around here lately, then you probably know that I'm trying to use up my Turner Acryl Gouache paints. And to do that, I need to make some paintings and I need to do it in my sketchbook. So that does two things. I fill my sketchbook, I practice my skills, and I use up my supplies instead of seeing them just sit there and go bad over time. Unused, unloved, and unwanted, which I don't want. So there are a couple of ways that I come up with ideas of how to do that, how to use up my supplies, what should I do? Sometimes I just know exactly what I wanna do. I saw some sort of landscape that really inspired me or I watched a video of someone doing a still life and it made me wanna do a still life or I saw a really cute animal and I wanna do that animal. Those are the most common ways. But sometimes I just want to make art and I don't know what I wanna do. And if you're in that category with me, then this video is definitely for you. So one way that I come up with ideas of how to fill my sketchbook is I get inspired by the color palette itself. And that's the first example here that I'm showing you. I basically started by painting this page with two pastel-y, pinky, salmon-y colors in two different shapes, just for visual interest before deciding what I was gonna paint on them at all. <laughs> I literally painted these squares, mixed these colors, picked a couple of colors from my Turner or Curl gouache tubes that looked like they were a little full and I wanna use those up more and mixed them up until I came with a color that I really liked and painted this page with those colors, two different tones that coordinated. And the pastel palette here really inspired me. So once I had the page covered in pastel colors, then my assignment which made it a lot easier to do something and pick something was when you have a little a bit of an assignment was to find a reference picture that utilized a lot of pastels. So what I did is I went over to Pexels and Pixabay to look at free reference images, which is where I get most of my reference images on those two sites. There are a lot of free reference photo sites, but those are the two I use the most. And there's actually a lot of video material here on YouTube with reviews of various different sites if you wanna pick different sites to use for you. Once I was on those sites this time, one reference photo in particular jumped out at me and it's probably not a surprise to you why it did. This picture was so cute. It was so cute. It was just so cute. It was this little baby chickadee sitting on a carton of sort of like Easter eggs because the eggs were all different colors, but it looked like a very, I don't know how else to put it, but like lacy, image it was everything was a little more muted it wasn't these bright freshly dyed pastel eggs it was more like day three or day 10 i don't even know i have never dyed my own eggs folks a shock to you but i've never dyed my own eggs i've only seen them so i don't actually know how long but it's in my mind as a total ignoramus who doesn't know how long or how this works or how it how long it takes that's how i interpreted these they were just really pale beautiful eggs there was some um, there's that flower that has the word lace in it, like grandma's lace or something. Someone in the comments who loves horticulture will know and tell me, I'm sure. But that like lacy plant that they use as a filler with roses sometimes, and it's really pretty, that was sort of stuck between the eggs. I didn't end up painting those, but I loved the chick. I loved the eggs. I loved the carton. I loved the shadows. And I loved that there was a lot of solid tone around the main figure. So once I was in love with the reference image, I went to town, I sketched, I will tell you, I was very nervous because when you sketch, in my experience, sketching on top of Turner or Krill gouache once it is dry and using a pencil, erasing it really rubs that, that paint off a little bit. It's not like you erase the paint, but it definitely takes some of the pigment off of the page and you can see that there's like a smear of some other color, some other duller or whiter or paler color of paint wherever you erased. I don't know the science of this or understand why, but I get it and I've experienced enough to know that I'm not going to be able to just rub an eraser on top of the dried background and still have that beautiful graphic, solid, solid matte feel that you get when you're using acryl gouache or acrylic gouache. And you can see right here, 
what I'm talking about. Like, look how cool that background looks. Look how cool the chick looks just popping off of that background. And by the way, that chick came together so quickly. So I really enjoy that. I like to work quickly and I like to see results quickly. A lot of artists move more slowly and take their time, especially colored pencil artists. I'm like baffled and so impressed by how they work and their style and their method. Like Colorfully Optimistic does that. I know Moni D. Major takes her, her sweet time making her paintings and they're Stunning. So I get it and I admire that process. But the way I work is I like to slap paint down and see something come together that I like and that I want to smile at as quickly as possible. I very much have no patience to get to a stage of the painting that I enjoy looking at, which is just different. Like we all work differently. And I wonder what style you have. I love getting to know your styles in the comments. So maybe the comment of the day, let me know, are you like me and you're a speedy, speedy Mix Peterson and you want to see the result come together as quickly as possible so you can start smiling down at your painting right away? Or are you more of like a Moni or a Cory from Colorfully Optimistic and you take your time and you love the process and you just take your time? Mira Byler is like that too. And I love watching her process too. It's funny how I enjoy watching so many different types of art processes on YouTube. It has nothing to do with my style. I just love seeing other people's styles. And I wonder if you're the same way. So that is what I did here. And I will tell you, I think that having an assignment, and that's what a lot of this is about. And you absolutely should take what I'm, there was a hair there in the paint. <laughs> but you should actually absolutely take what I'm telling you in this video as different types of assignments that you could assign yourself so that you have ideas of what to do on those days that you're not really particularly drawn in by any specific thing to do. And you're feeling a little lost and it's stopping you from running in there and grabbing your sketchbook and getting to it. So I find that these assignment concepts are really helpful. And I think that's one of the reasons why people really like those prompts, whether it's Inktober prompts or, you know, Mermaid or Plan April, or if it's um, the actual up crate or, you know, smart art or all those art boxes. That's one of the reasons I think a lot of people like those is because they just give you what you need to use. They tell you a concept you can work with and now you have an assignment and you can kind of give your brain a little bit of a break and decision fatigue can be a little bit eased if you know what I mean. So that's one of the value adds I find from those things and from the fill your sketchbook or how to fill your sketchbook or sketchbook ideas or painting ideas videos that I've watched for years on YouTube. And it's definitely one of the reasons I'm making this for you because I want to add to that and build on that and just pay it forward basically. So this is one where once I got it here, I really enjoyed looking at it, but I was just really excited to add some sort of detail, like metallic detail. So I took this awesome Signo, and let me actually look at the name of this. This is called the Uniball Signo Gold Metallic Pen in Broad. And I love this pen. I think it is so sparkly and shiny and beautiful and I've talked it up before. And actually one of my sweet subscribers asked in a comment the last time I showed this and she was like, ooh, what's that pen? And I told her, she was like, oh, I already have it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I feel that. I feel that to my soul. That is, I feel that to my toes. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wonder if any of you have done that before too. Um, but I was happy to reintroduce her to something that she already had that she could re-enjoy. So that's how this little baby chick came together. I loved the pastel color and the pastel is what inspired this piece. And I just followed that pastel all the way down to its core. And, you know, this sort of approach of having limited things and having um, assignments is also something that I'm seeing a lot on Miranda Watson's channel over at Alkali Creek Art and also on Jenna Gets Creative. She does this no box art box challenge, which for me is a tongue twister, which is why I said it super slowly. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to join in on that challenge. A lot of my other YouTube creator friends, art tubers, have been joining in on that challenge. I think it's the coolest thing and a great idea. And I'm really excited that I'm seeing it just take off. I'm really happy for her and I'm really happy for the community because I think it's such a positive thing to do exactly what that subscriber did and basically fall back in love with some of the supplies you already have. So this is the first assignment, which is pick a color scheme that inspires you. Use that to pick a picture that works with that color scheme and dive in. So this is my little chickadee. Let me know what you think. And I'm making three pieces for this video. This is the first one. Let me know in the comments at the end which one was your favorite, either the piece that was your favorite or the idea that you are really inspired by and the idea that's your favorite that you're gonna maybe follow through with. 
Next up, my idea was to be inspired just by a subject, a general subject. So we're talking still life, animal, landscape, portrait, figurative work, abstract of, uh, actually abstract, no, 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 I'm wrong. That's a style. Darn it. I was on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, a subject, a mailbox, a thing, person, place, or thing. What did they used to say? Are you animal, mineral, or vegetable? No, that's not it either. Well, you know what? I'm sure I'll get a lot of information in the comments about what I'm thinking of today that I cannot seem to grab and actually say the words properly. You're with me though, you get the concept. So here, I have been seeing such cool still life all over Instagram in my feed lately. I follow a lot of cool artists and there's been a lot of vases going on. There's been a lot of bouquets going on. There have been a lot of fruit happening on my, on my feed. And I saw a lot of glass and I personally get extremely terrified of glass. I get very terrified of painting it. It has so many nuances, so many reflections, so much bendy, you know, light bendy things happening. And I just get real intimidated because you kind of do have to turn your brain off and just paint shapes and stop trying to think this is a curve on the edge of the glass and just throw that out and say, this is a an oblong dark shape. And what color does it look like? Well, glass surely couldn't be just like purple or red or green, but yeah, it, it can be like it absolutely, it, it picks up the color of whatever's around it. Like clouds, I find them very challenging. Like snow, I find it very challenging. Anything that your brain reads as white or clear is very hard for me to pick the colors out and figure it out. So sometimes I like to pick a challenge. And that's definitely what I did here. I said, you know what? Caution to the wind, my friends. I'm going to paint a glass and it's going to be very hard for me. So I actually am happy with how this came out, but you definitely can see that this is not my comfort zone, that I'm out of my wheelhouse as it were, and I'm not, you know, <laughs> this isn't what I do for a living, if you know what I mean. But I'm really happy to show that too. I'm obviously much more comfortable with cute animals, and I'm actually much more comfortable with watercolor than with acryl gouache. But even so, I like to practice and practice and practice and get better. And there are things I'm really proud of. And you've seen me make things on this channel that I'm extremely proud of. But I also like to show the goof ups and I like to show the mess ups and I like to show the things that are fine. And I like to show the things that are just like, okay. And that's what I would say about this. I, in my opinion, I think this came out okay. But I definitely think I could do it again and even do it again and again and try more and more. So this also was my lesson in the color shift, the intense color shift that happens with Turner acryl gouache. And honestly, with most gouache and most acryl gouache, you get a pretty significant color shift, but you can actually see it happening in this video where I put it down and it looks like a pale lavender gray and it's drying right before your eyes with the time lapse into a much darker purpley gray. So even though I saw it happening and I tried to adjust the white, the white never really lightened it up and I added more purple and the purple never really purpled it up the way that I wanted. And I was really tempted at the end to use my purple Posca pen that I used in my recent self-portrait on the traveling sketchbook video, which I'll link below for you because that's a really fun video. And another thing that's sort of outside of my wheelhouse and comfort zone, um, doing a portrait for the channel, which I've only done, I believe twice. So I, you know, I just started after the painting this big, the two big boxes of color with Turner and then doing the whole chickadee painting with Turner and a little bit of that gold pen and a little cleanup with Micron pen and then doing this whole painting with Turner and the white gel pen. I was like, I'm kind of done. I'm not feeling the Turner. <laughs> But I was trying to do this video as a let's use all this beautiful Turner acryl gouache here. And that's actually Blick Matte Acrylic, just so you know. Blick Matte Acrylic Paint, which is super cheap. I ran out of my Turner White, so I've been using my um, Blick White because I have a ton of that that I'm going to also have to use later. So I've just been going to that. But it works exactly the same. I see zero difference. Just so you know, if you've been wondering about all that Blick Matte Acrylic, I do use it and I mix it with my Turner and it works great. So I've been trying to use that up, the Turner, 
and I was feeling like internal pressure. Literally no one cares. None of you are pressuring me. None of you are, care. If I use a, some other material, you're just here for it. You love all art materials much like I do. But I, I have this sort of self-imposed pressure and desire to use those up. And so I felt kind of guilty not wanting to use them anymore on the third painting because I did these day to day to day, back to back to back. So by the time I got to this little comfort zone baby, I did go ahead and let myself use whatever the heck I wanted. And you know what happened? I went into multimedia queen zone and that's exactly what I did. So this is actually that awesome Archer and Olive Acrylograph seven millimeter paint pen in like a blue, it's like a royal blue, I would say, a purpley blue. And I started doing that with these eyes and then I did some Turner Acryl to do the big blocky background. And then I decided to go into my watercolors for the actual animal. I will tell you this, I love the phase of this painting that you're about to see in a minute where everything's filled in except the owl's body, like just the owl's eyes are filled in and the background's filled in. That's actually my favorite part of this painting. <laughs> I think that once I kept going and filled it in, it did go awry. And I actually do plan to paint this little baby again. But I just wanted to note that for you. If you're watching me paint it and watching it come together and you're like, oh no, she's ruined it. I did kind of feel that way too. Again, I want you to see that process. I could have dumped this footage, painted it again, and you never would have known this first one existed. How does that help anything? Like, I don't want you guys thinking that I just pop out perfect final pieces day after day and I love every single thing that I make. I make a lot of stuff that I absolutely love and I'm obsessed with and I look at it over and over and then I make a lot of flubs and flusters. <laughs> That's the thing. And I enjoy those too. They make me laugh. It's fun. So I know I've talked about that here before. It's a major theme. I love reiterating it because I would have really appreciated hearing that more and more as I was first learning and getting my sea legs. It was really hard to see such beautiful work, you know, video after video and thinking to myself, well, maybe that person, you know, this is their living and this is their career and this is all they do. Or maybe they've been doing it since they were a kid and I haven't. Or, you know, I would just basically try to find reasons not to compare myself. And sometimes it's just easier to say, I do compare myself. And so it would be helpful to see if this person ever makes <laughs> anything they don't like. So I can kind of compare myself to that too and feel a little bit less self-imposed pressure. You know what I mean? So this is what I'm talking about. This was like my favorite phase of this painting. And this one, the assignment, the assignment here. So first was color inspired. Second was subject inspired. And so color inspired was pastels. Subject inspired was the cup, the glass cup. This one is getting inspired by a feeling. And the feeling that I was inspired by when I went to paint this, which you can probably already tell, was cute. I wanted to do something cute. I wanted to do something so cute that it just made me make that noise. <laughs> and it made me go, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> my cute reaction that I usually have just to my dog, but is also reserved for my absolute favorite cute animal paintings. So I was just like, I need to get back to my roots. I miss doing super adorable, cute animals. I've been doing a lot of stretching and trying to do portraits and the cup and things like that. But sometimes I just want to go home and going home for me is doing a cute little patootie. So that's what this is. Again, this was the moment and I did pull the tape off and think to myself, if I was not doing this for YouTube, I would not fill this in. I would take a colored pencil or two and lightly do some deeper lines or even take my micron and maybe define some lines like around the eyes and I would be done. I would not, I would be too scared to keep going that I would mess it up. I literally feel that way all the time. Don't go any further, you're gonna mess it up. And I had that feeling here. And you know what happened? I messed it up. <laughs> I messed it up real good and it's fine. I'm fine, I survived, the sketchbook page was filled. I will look at this page and think, well, maybe I wanna make that one again. And I don't know if you've seen all the times I've done my floof owl, but I've repainted this floofy owl on my channel, channel, not this one, but a floofy owl that I did once and loved, and then I repainted it. I've done that one like so many times. It's a go-to, if I wanna paint something cute, I can paint it with a different background or making a different look or in a different location, like in a tree, on a branch, on the ground, <laughs> in a bed. I could literally paint that floof owl anywhere and I would know that I would have a good time. And that's what this owl is probably gonna become. Like I can paint this one over and over. This one is also based on a picture from either Pixabay or Pexels. And it was actually of, I believe, a sculpture. So there's like an actual toy-ish looking thing 
that this owl is and they have him in different positions like he's listening to music on a headset you'll see if you search like cute owl you'll find this owl and obviously i change things up and i do things a little bit differently but um i just wanted to note that so you know sometimes i do paint sculptures of cute animals there's an Instagram artist who makes the cutest animal sculpture, and I love drawing his stuff. It's Chris R something, but it's a very complicated last name to say, so I'll have to put it in the description. So this one was inspired by cute. I got to the stage and I thought to myself, I've destroyed this. So I went in with Posca pens to try to bring it back to life. I was like, what have I done? <laughs> So I went in with Posca pens and this is my delicious, super fat nib sherbet type color Posca. And I liked what that did. I liked how that brought it down. And then I brought in my mid-tone brown and then my dark brown. And I do like that. I wish I just left it again. I wish I'd left it here. And actually, as I'm watching this, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to go back in and go back over the belly with the sherbet because I really do like this stage. I think I just did. I went too crazy on the darks. We have a really dark background slash to mid-tone so the floor is dark the background is more mid-tone but this owl gets lost because he doesn't have dramatic enough value he doesn't have light enough lights and dark enough darks so this was good for adding the dark darks but then again that belly got too dark so just went a little too overboard sometimes you overwork and it's a good lesson to learn and it's really helpful to self-critique and say like where did i go overboard when did i stop liking this and i think that i liked this little baby best when he was a lot lighter than his background so he stood out a little better so that's what i'm going to do when i redo this little baby boy so i hope that that is really helpful to you to hear that a we make mistakes constantly and we do usually curate our social media presence as art tubers or you know instagram artists to try to show what we think people want to actually see like you don't want to just see like where the paint's build or something but for videos like this when i'm going through a process and telling you how i use my sketchbooks this is literally how i use my sketchbooks to learn these lessons in my sketchbook instead of when i'm doing a final piece that I want to be really proud of and I want it to be perfect. If I don't let myself mess up, I can't learn. So I'm getting much better about values, but this will just be yet another lesson for me. Look at that. I mean, look how much cuter when it's light <laughs> against that background. So those are my Regina's watercolors, by the way. I'm also trying to use those up. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot of good ideas. Go off and be color inspired, subject inspired, or feeling inspired and fill some pages in your sketchbook. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and make sure you're subscribed. It really helps. Leave me a comment with which was your favorite. And until next time, remember, create something cute.